1933, Denmark's Prime Minister Torvel Stauning inaugurated the world's largest machine, the gigantic diesel engine of the H.C. Ørsted power plant that we're looking at now. It was 50% larger than any engine previously built and was to supply electrical power for the residents of Denmark's capital. The press was enthusiastic. One newspaper wrote, After having seen the monster, no one feels an urge to save electricity in the future. And Prime Minister Stauning said, May the H.C. Ørsted power station be a pride for Denmark and useful to the people. And it was not just the engine that was new. The building where the Prime Minister had spoken had been erected with the sole purpose of accommodating this colossus of a power engine. We're on a newly filled piece of land in Copenhagen's southern harbour. Right outside the building, fishermen still have their drying grounds with the poles they use to dry their nets. The first part of the H.C. Ørsted power plant predates the event. It was built between 1916 and 1920 using steam turbines as the source of power. In 1933, when the plant was extended, it became the job of the new diesel engine to handle peak loads when all Copenhagen's housewives or factory owners were using electricity at the same time during the day. For more than 30 years, the engine was the largest in the world and, like the rest of the power plant, played a special role during World War II. The H.C. Ørsted power plant had its own resistance group who practiced their shooting skills in the basement corridors. The buildings with the large turbines were secured against air raids in order to limit the risk to the Danish capital if it had to shut off the electricity. The diesel engine itself was also a hiding place for larger weapons. Here the resistance fighters have opened the filter of the diesel engine where they've hidden a 20mm machine cannon. And after occupation, the building we're in was used to accommodate several hundred homeless people who'd lost their dwellings during the chaos of the war. Now look at the large power engine right in the middle. We see the maneuver platform with its control panel. Here we see the monitors for the engine's revolution speed, its performance, lubrication oil, scavenging air and cooling water. From here the engine can be started, monitored and stopped again by a single man who controls a force of 22,000 horsepower. The engine is 12.5 meters from top to bottom, corresponding to an ordinary residential building four stories high. It is 24.5 meters long and weighs no less than 1,400 tons or more than a thousand large private cars. The engine has eight cylinders. We can see the top of them sticking up from the top of the engine. Inside each cylinder, a piston goes up and down, approximately twice a second. Here on the gangway to the right, we see a piston that is identical to those inside the engine. This is a double acting engine where combustion takes place both when the piston is up and down. The movement of the pistons is transferred to the rotating axle, the crankshaft, using the crosshead and the connecting rod. This type of crankshaft has many uses. Here it's used to drive a generator for electricity. The encapsulated generator can be seen to the far right, halfway down in the floor. The horizontal steel grey pipe running along the top edge of the engine carries scavenging air to the cylinders. The exhaust pipe comes out from the left side of the engine and ends outside the building as a chimney. The fuel for the engine comes from the large vertical tanks which are right behind us on the gangway. The diesel engine was invented shortly before 1900 by the German engineer Rudolf Diesel. It is not the principle of a piston engine that's new. This was already used in the steam engines of the 18th century. But in contrast to the steam engine, the diesel engine is a combustion engine, which means that the piston is set in motion by combustion inside the cylinder. The special thing about the diesel engine, compared with a petrol-driven engine, and this was diesel's idea, is that the fuel inside the cylinder is ignited solely by the heat of the air that the piston has compressed. This means that the diesel engine has no spark plugs. The great advantage of the diesel engine is that it can run on crude oil and thus cheaper fuel oils, and that it is stable and requires very little maintenance. 
In 1889, Rudolf Diesel entered into an agreement with the Danish company Bormeister and Wayne, B&W, which was at the time one of the world's leading machine factories and shipyards. Initially, the diesel engine was sold to small factories and power stations in Denmark and was used for power for engines or generators for electricity. It was vital for bringing electrical power to all corners of Denmark in the early 20th century. In 1912, B&W made history when they introduced Selandia, the world's first ocean-going ship driven by a diesel engine. Britain's Marine Minister Winston Churchill said, Denmark, the old seafaring nation, has put herself ahead of a movement which will prove unique in the evolution of shipping. Little by little, the diesel engine replaced steam in the large ships and the biggest factories. And since then, it has rapidly developed to give even greater performance and, most importantly today, towards a reduction of environmentally harmful waste. This large diesel engine was also manufactured by B&W. It was in permanent operation until the 1970s and was last used in 2003 when the Ersund region experienced a serious power cut. On that occasion, the old giant was restarted so that the power plants in Copenhagen could regain their momentum. Now it has been detached completely from the network and has begun its second life here in Diesel House as a memorial to the industrial epoch in Denmark's history. Diesel House contains much more than the engine that was once the largest in the world. On the first floor, we show the importance of the diesel engine for society, for large and small ships, and as the source of light in our lamps and electricity in our homes. On the second floor, we tell the story of the company that was Denmark's largest employer for more than a century, Burmeister and Wayne. This company was founded in 1843 and has experienced the industrialization of Denmark to this very day. In 1980, the engine plant was bought by Diesel's old partner, Maschinenfabrik Augsburg MAN, so that today the company is called MAN, B&W Diesel. The top floor presents the newest initiatives in engine development. And what does the future look like with limited oil resources and obvious demands for maximum reduction of the harmful effects on the environment? Here we can see how this development work that was once carried out with rulers at drawing tables is now 100% virtual and takes place in an electronic universe. Welcome to Diesel House. 